Been meaning to do this for some time. Tar River. Tar River Implement. I picked this up in Burgaw, North Carolina. So let's say that you had a big, big week or weekend with your no-till drill, like I did. And this, by the way, is the dun, dun, Saya 507. Um, let's say you had a big weekend and you were putting down millet seed. So we have two troughs, large seed trough, small seed trough. I did fertilizer, and we'll talk about that in a second, and um, millet. And I'll show you the um, videos and everything on the millet. But after a big week uh, or any time that you actually go and utilize these no-till drills, when you get done, you have to clean it out. And you got to clean it all out. And this is a lot easier than this. And the only way that I've seen to do it is with a vacuum. So um, if you don't clean it out, you end up with that literally here in South Carolina because of the high humidity. With This occurs probably within three to four days. And that being... Um, Obviously, germination of said uh, brown millet seeds. So, um, I'll show you real quick, and you'll be able to hear me. So that one was not as bad, but this one, yep, this one's got um, growth um, through little cracks and crevices and things like that. So um, we'll just take me a little more time to, I have to go get a screwdriver and dig out some of it. But um, certainly one of the challenges with no-till drills, and you know, I don't think it's just this one, um, I did have seed up probably two or three inches left over, so I used this and scooped it all down, and it's got a little opening here, and you have a tube, that you connect the new tube, and I put a bucket right there, and basically just threw everything, and that was easy, it wasn't too bad. This part is um, obviously going to take me longer, so um, definitely wanted to provide um, clarity on that. I will say all in all, I've been really happy with the snow-till drill. It's uh, it's pretty good. Um, I do have some rust down here on the end. Again, that's because I left the fertilizer in here. Um, you can see these screws are regular. Uh, they're not stainless. And these are not stainless. So I'm going to have to go and change these because I'm certain that I will leave the fertilizer in here again at some point. I just I was in too much of a hurry. And it was either put it in the ground and leave here at 9 or 10 o'clock to get home or not put it in the ground. And I'm glad that I put it in the ground. But I'm going to have some, some work to do on this side. Anyway, all in all, a great tool, great device. Been very happy with it. And I will show you some of the plantings that I've done in their current state. Here's one of the areas where I used the Tar River no-till drill. Um, this is in not too far from where Interstate 95 and 26 intersect in South Carolina. And uh, we have sandy soil, so what weren't any issues with the cultures or the row openers getting down into the ground. This is millet. And I was able to do this section and all over there and all over there. And I planted the millet, had that in the smaller seed bin, and fertilizer in the large seed bin. And that fertilizer was five, it was low in nitrogen. 
um, so that it, we didn't burn the seeds. 5, 15, 15 or something like that. I'll have to go look and maybe include that in the notes. But um, here we are mid-July and I think we put this in the ground in early um, June. So it's probably been 45 days. And the millet is starting to um, seed up on the top, especially some of the bigger sections over there where probably a little more fertilizer fell down. Uh, did this at night, so I missed a row. Yeah, um, idiot farmer. But uh, you can see that the, all in all, I was very happy with the Tar River no-till drill. It did a, a good job. Um, and here's the rest of the sections. I'm definitely put down, I don't know, probably oh, four, six, seven, eight hundred pounds worth of, um, getting eaten by mosquitoes, four, seven, four hundred, five hundred pounds of, um, fertilizer. That's it.